The past few years have seen an explosion in the variety and number of Pokemon ROM hacks, demakes, fan projects, and all sorts of other wonders on the internet. These games are usually made by sole developers using disassembly or other available tools for a specific audience with a unique spin on something to do with Pokemon. It's a pretty vague set of criteria, but the sheer number of these games and their continued growth and popularity is genuinely staggering, and I wanted to take a closer look at what drives this massive growth and see what the deal is. For starters, the number of types of games that are now available is incredible. Even 5 or 6 years ago, Pokemon ROM hacks mostly adhered to a specific formula, modifications of the games that kept the base mechanics mostly the same. Even if the developers added lots of original content, including Pokemon, regions, tile sets, music, side quests, all that stuff, the game still functioned like basic Pokemon games. You catch Pokemon, battle gyms, and strive to beat the Elite Four and Champ. Linear storylines and a set of six Pokemon to use at a time remained constant. I'm not at all knocking these types of projects, I think they're great. I'm just saying that at that time, most fan projects neatly fit into these parameters. Now, the options are staggering. People are creating fan projects that move well beyond the genre of RPG and into areas that Game Freak has never even contemplated, even with their most wonderful side games. There's Pokemon roguelites and likes, and randomizer challenges with specific rules like Ironmon, but also less common entries like escape room type games, puzzle and horror games, as well as boss rushes and other weird and wonderful additions. Others include Pokemon games with more adult themes and violence, marking themselves starkly different from any main series game. A short browse through a site like Pokeharbor shows how much this world has expanded and how much further it could go. Also, the format of the games is slowly changing too. As more disassembly tools become available, more and more developers are choosing to work with DS titles instead of the dominant Game Boy or Game Boy Advance setup that has been the case for a long time. In other interesting cases, such as Poke Rogue, some games are played in a web browser without the need for downloading a ROM or an emulator at all. It's not that this was inconceivable five years ago, Pokemon Showdown has existed for a very long time, but it certainly isn't dominant practice. Not only are developers expanding genres at a breakneck pace, the content packed into these games is enormous as well. While early fan games and projects focused on adding original content or simply offering an enhanced or refreshed version of a game, many ROM hacks now offer the players well over 700 Pokemon to choose from, with mechanical qualities spanning over many generations of the main series games. I'm talking about Mega Evolutions, Dynamaxing, Z-Moves, novel abilities, and updated battle mechanics packed into simple Game Boy Advance ROM formats. Some games merge maps and randomize areas into zones for players to race through in a key item randomizer style format. Others blend other franchises such as Mario and Minecraft in with Pokemon, further pushing the envelope. To the non-developer brain like mine, it's kind of astounding and amazing at how much is now being crammed into these ROM formats from the early 2000s. Keep it up, I say. The large number of these games being made and published and played every day also shocks me a little. It's not uncommon for people to quickly jump into a game after its release and for it to seem like everyone is doing nothing but playing that game on Twitch and YouTube for months. Kaizo Ironmon, Archipelago, and Pokerogue are great examples of fan projects that blew up and found large audiences relatively quickly. I wanted to know, how and why was this taking place at such a great pace? My first thoughts always run to the audience, the people who actually play and to a degree promote these fan games. As the trickle of new Pokemon content actually slows, more people are looking to fan projects to fill the demand for new Pokemon games instead of just playing old ones again. This is something I discussed a bit in my DMAX video, and to an extent I think it rings true for fan projects generally. Less to do with nostalgia though, as many of these newer projects go in different directions and explore modern mechanics in Pokemon in different ways than just demaking a game. But clearly the demand is there for interesting fan projects that expand on what Pokemon has to offer. 
Secondly, some of these games are projects that Game Freak is not likely to touch anytime soon. At this point, side games in the style of Pinball, Trozy, and Ranger seem to be a thing of the past in Game Freak's mind, as it turns more of its attention to bigger and better main series projects. Better in air quotes, of course. Fan projects are now moving into that side game space. The games borrow assets from Pokemon and take them into other genres like roguelites and escape games. It's not the case that they're competing with Game Freak, they're just doing an entirely different thing altogether. One aspect of fan projects that several people commented on in my DMake video was the appeal for the people making these projects, and I completely agree. I am not a game developer, but I enjoy making videos and music and spend a lot of my time doing so. Whenever I have an idea that seems even kind of interesting, I have a heck of a lot of fun playing with that idea and seeing if it will work. I imagine the same appeal exists for game developers of fan projects. There is a unique thrill in chasing an idea, seeing how far you can take it, and then sharing it with a group of deeply interested people. With the newer tools and disassemblies available to developers, it's no surprise that this creative wave continues to grow, and it's not hard to see why the projects have gone in so many different directions recently. I also can't help but think about the context of the last few main series Pokemon releases and their reception from Pokemon fans generally. With the exception of Legends Arceus, Sword, BDSP and Scarlet and Violet have been received poorly, largely for their lackluster quality control and sometimes downright lazy execution. It's hard not to look at how these terrible PR cycles have gone for Game Freak, and think that many people would react with disappointment and think, even with a disassembly tool and a 20 year old ROM, I can do a better job than that. And it seems like that's exactly what some people are doing. After all, the intellectual property of Pokemon is the common thread here, and seems to be what people are clinging to after 30 years, so why wouldn't such a large and diverse fanbase come up with interesting and unique ideas, provided they have the necessary tools to execute them? So what comes next? It's easy to think that this rate of expansion and growth could continue forever, even in the shadow of Game Freak's lawyers. The scale of growth in every direction is now outpacing the ability of their legal team to send cease and desists. So, lacking that barrier, where will fan developers take us next? There's already new games coming out in fighting genres, but how many more visual novels will we get? When will people start remastering Pokemon Puzzle League in different styles? How frequently are we going to get a new type of randomizer that stuns us into playing nothing else for an entire month? These things may have already happened and I haven't heard about it, or they may be about to happen. What I am sure of is that the level of creativity and imagination out there at the moment means that the horizons are endless, and I'm very excited to see what people come up with next. Thanks for watching everyone. Tell me, what fan projects have captured your attention recently?